You know, they say there's a car out there for each and every one of us, and I tend to believe that. This car, however, was meant for Simeon McCready's. This is a 1997 BMW 740iL. It's painted in Schwartz II over sand beige. This particular car has a really great past, and today we're going to hear about that from the man himself, Simeon McCready's. I'm Scott H. Duke, and this is Drive In, Drive Out. This is a 97 pre-facelift E38 IL. I was doing this deal in September of 99. My dad wanted two things in life, a Breitling watch, he wanted a BMW, okay? And in 97, he passed. So, I had a leased expedition. I'm getting ready to go to a Ford dealer. My daughter played some soccer on a Saturday morning. I got 10K, I'm gonna go up and put a deposit down on another expedition, Eddie Bauer, you know, the whole bit. I'm at a light on Route 611, and sure enough, this Orient Blue 740 or 750 makes a left turn off of 63, and, and I'm sitting there going, someday, and it hit me. I'm going, wait a minute, I'm getting ready to drop 10 grand on a Ford. So we went to the BMW dealership. The girl says, yeah, I got one here. It was the least turned in. 22,000 miles, and the factory's offering 1.9 financing, and they'll give you the warranty, full warranty, out to 100,000 miles. What do you think sold you on the E38 when you bought it? Well, first of all, it was the, it was a status move back then. But see, I walked in blind. I had never had a BMW. And I didn't know what, other than the fact that it was one of those cars that you aspire to own someday. Exactly. When you're just starting out. And, and it's pretty amazing the, the, the story behind the decision to buy the car from a, a friends and relationship standpoint is, is to my mind unparalleled. I've met, made familial friendships, not just friendships or acquaintances, but people that I really care about, people that are welcome to stay at my home just for asking, uh, all over the world. It, the list is long, and, and it's all because we love this car. And had I known that, had somebody suggested that to me 20 years ago, I'd have laughed at it. really think that you're gonna develop relationships that will last you know that long and then turn into something that is way beyond the car itself at what point did you start to look around and go what else what else can I do to this to get a little bit more power out of it I mean how, how did how did all that come around yeah it's just like Star Trek the original Scotty I need more power there was a guy who was a customer of my ours? At, at, I was at Cheesesteak. I was a new hire there, and he saw the car. His name was Anthony Banani. He was a customer of the Philadelphia Cheesesteak Company, and he says, "Hey, nice car. You know, I had to get in this man. You ought to bring it out to Pocono. We're going to Pocono in two weeks, and I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a member of the Porsche Club, but we can still put you on the, put you on the racetrack, you know." So I. I was like, yeah, why not? I didn't have anything to do with, in my view, a badass sedan compared to what Detroit was making at the time. So I, so I wound up on Pocono Raceway with the Reason Toter PCA, and the 911s ate me alive. They really did. But, but I got to open it up on Pocono Raceway and, and be aggressive in the car, more so than you could be on a highway. And it was, it was kind of like, Man, this 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 needs more power. I I I'd really like to get more power out of this. So thing. at that point, it was a stock, stock, stock yes. 740 IL, 1997. And, hit and, the track. Yep, and you pump up the tires to 41 pounds, so you don't derim them in the twisties. And you go out there and you, you you leave a lot of rubber on the track, and and you have fun and you come home. When 
I got introduced to the entirety of the BMW Car Club. Uh, Dave Flogas, Van Chrysler, you know, all the people, uh, Speedy, and all the, everybody there, you know, and they, they kind of like welcomed me to their fold despite the fact that I'm driving a land yacht and they drive all these little E30s and E36s. Tell me about the One Lap of America. Where is that at? What's the deal? What's the, the story behind that? It was part of the lure, the legacy of, of a guy named Brock Yates, who later, after the Cannonball Run, became a writer and an editor for Car and Driver magazine. And his younger son, Brock Jr., what they would do, is, instead of having a mad dash on public highways, was they would lay out a course where you had to be in a certain racetrack, and when you, you competed on, for points on the racetrack in your vehicle class and so forth, and your next, your next competition might be 400 miles away in another state, in another town. So driving fast on the highway, did we do so? Yes. Am I going to tell you the details? No. <laughs> but let it, it, there were times that we were we were top speed in the, in the badlands of, of northern Texas, eastern New, uh, New Mexico. When did you start to dive into the modifications of the car, and, and who did you go to when you were looking at this? Uh, how did the conversation start? Was this on the internet, or were you looking at forums, or just kind of? looking anywhere you could to try to find out you know, how to get more power out of this thing. It's a complicated story. There was racing dynamics, and the only thing you could get from them were, were nifty wheels and an exhaust system. There was dining, and the same thing. They would program your transmission and program your ECU, maybe give you another five or 10 horsepower. And then later on, you could get mufflers, and you could, you could uh, bump it up a little more. And I had gone through stage three, stage four, all kinds of dining work done at uh, Devon BMW, and I still wasn't happy. I really wanted the six-speed. And, and they were only available in Europe at that point. I mean, you could get I, a six-speed in a, what, an M5, but you couldn't get it in a seven series unless you lived in, in Germany. abroad in Germany. The M3 that was the Euro version was a hot chassis. It was a serious performing machine. The right. M3 that they sent here to the United States was a joke. It was a couple more horsepower than the standard 3 Series uh, E36 3, and it just had the decals on it and, and, and some M badging. So really, if you wanted to do anything along those lines, you had to go to you that. You had to go to Europe. I approached George Lawton, who was the parts manager for Don Rosen BMW in um, Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. And I asked him if they would consider sponsoring the car for the One Lap of America if I were to confine all parts purchases, all equipment purchases, and go through him. We carried their logo, and they did us a serious discount on the parts, and George discovered that we could get uh, European E38 pedal sets, slave cylinders, and so forth for this chassis from the European BMW parts list. At this point, before you, you did this, I mean, how many miles are we talking about on this car when you decide that I'm going to start taking things apart? I went from 20,000, 22,000 miles when I bought it to about 42,000. So 42,000, I need more. I'm going to take this apart. Right. I'm going to make this better. Right. I asked around the BMW club and, and I said, okay, who, who do you guys go to if you want performance mods? You know, not body work or repairs, I'm talking about performance mods. And they said, you're probably better off talking to Tony Saloum at VAC Motorsports, who was just now, at that time, starting into the performance market. They were they were just, just finishing up purchasing Milano Engine and Machine as part of the, the VAC Motorsports company. So they were growing their arm and they were getting right. deeper into automotive work. Right. And you came along at a time where they were Looking I guess, for projects. Looking for projects and doing some experimentation. Exactly. How can we grow? How can we put our stamp on something that'll get us seen? Right, and Tony was willing to work with George. So we wound up buying a brand new, out of the box, S6S 420 
get drag transmission, uh, clutch kit for the M5, E39 M5, E39 M5 differential. And I came along and said, I want a ESS supercharger in it too. Well, at that point, Tony says, I'm not doing anything to this motor unless I can stop the car. So I had another five grand for a Brakes. Brembo GT brake system. And we had to determine if it would fit and work before he blessed the idea of adding another 100 horsepower to the motor. And after that, it just became, it, it, at times it seemed like it was, I was just throwing money out the window, but, but at the end, when we went to the one lap, you're sitting in a car that will roll down the highway at 120 miles an hour and you can let go of the steering wheel and it will not waver. Is it a drift car? No. Is it an autocross car? No. But if you're on a highway and, and you've got nothing in front of you but sunset and soybeans on either side, like on 80 through Iowa, it's you, can, a, you it's, can have some fun. It's the land rocket. I mean, it, this car was made for that. This car, this chassis, it sits down at 100 at 140, and, and the body just drops, and you don't know it until you let off the gas, and you'll see it come back up. They built it to roll down highways at, at crazy speed. And I got to give some some props to VAC, to Tony, because he told me, he said, hey, I'm going to put the supercharger on for this competitive event you're getting into, but you're going to start cavitating, your, your, you're going to start having oil blow by because you're going to beat on the motor and it's an aluminum block. Right, and, and, right. And it doesn't have FI pistons, it's not set up for forced induction, and not only are you just putting a supercharger on it, you're going to take it out to racetracks and beat on it. Right. And sure enough, a year later, after the one lap, in 2003, I had to have the motor rebuilt because I was getting oil blow-by. That was about 48,000 miles, maybe, 49, 50,000 miles. Did a full rebuild, everything. CP pistons, we did rods, we did, we did manly uh, racing valves, flowed the heads, reground the crams, re reground and balance, rebalance the crank. Full motor rebuild. Beyond uh, that, I mean, did you take the car anywhere else? Did, did you, after all this work had been done to it, you put a six-speed in it, it's supercharged, one lap, you know, you're having a lot of fun with it, did you, what else did you do with the car? We were on a Bimmer board, and we were discussing the idea of how much fun it would be if a group of us pooled our money together and shipped our cars to Germany and drove them flat out on the autobahn. And I think at the time, maybe like six or seven guys expressed interest. But when it came time to write the check, I was the only fool in the group, <laughs> more or less. And that's what I did. Uh, we, we shipped a car to Germany out of uh, New, Newark, New Jersey, to Hamburg. And we drove it around Germany. We had a ball. We, we had a real ball. We, had a, we, we did three laps on the Nordschleife. This car has actually been on the Nürburgring itself with myself, Eric, and Wynn driving. We've been up and down autobahns. Um, I left it at G-Power to see if they could help out with the tuning. It turns out it did not, they could not. And, and it was a disaster because that business had some problems with within within the organization and there was a court case between the two, the two partners and in order to avoid having the vehicle fall as an asset to be divided between the two partners, Mr. Zanecka gave the car to another tuner so that it would not be counted as the asset, an asset of the business. And meanwhile, you're back in America. Uh, yeah, I'm back in America and, and, and I'm not hearing much because my friend, the guy that sponsored this trip, was in the German military and he was you know, wherever they sent him. Right, so kind of hard to find out where you're, that's, that's not a good feeling to not know, especially after that much uh, money and effort to not know where your car is. Exactly. In essence, to, you know. I, that's, I learned depression. 
Yeah. In those days. Wow. So how, how did the car get found? I mean, how did it turn up? What was the the short story of how? Well, it kind of you kind of knew where it was, but after all that legal, after all the legalities that happened, it was uh, somebody had it. But how do I get it back? Well, that's the thing. I, I, they, were, they were asking me for more money, uh, and I and I was hesitant, and I said, Nah, you know what? I think I'll just have you guys, you know, we'll send the car home. I met Edwin. And I asked Edwin, now this is a guy I just met who lives in Hulzane, the Netherlands. Right. I just met him, and I asked him, if I send you money, will you go get my car from the, these guys in Germany and take it to the port in Rotterdam and send it home to me? Sure, why not? Sure, why not? E38 BMW guy, yep. why not? And, and we've been best friends and brothers ever since. And that's what happened. Well, he gets there, he reaches out to these people, and they say, well, Mr. McCready owes another 5,000 euros, so I had to transfer money, and this time I sent it to him, so that he went and presented them with the money, and that would be it. I paid him, he went and got the car, drove it to Rotterdam, threw it on a boat, sent it back to the States, and the rest is, as they say, is history. This all has to do with the friendship that, that we developed over the years, as opposed to my car is better than your car. It's never really been about that. It was always about um, the friendship that we developed through, through the ownership and through the collaboration on, on, on the board. And, and I, find, I find that remarkable from a, uh, a random act of going in and buying a used car at a dealership one day with my daughter. So the 10 or 15 years later, you still have relationships with right. people that because you bought a car. I find that astounding. I find that astounding. Speaks to the car guy mentality that people have a lot in common with one another and whether they're bonded by an automobile or whatever it may be, there's always that common ground where you're gonna forge new friendships and the car becomes secondary almost. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Enjoyed it. My pleasure. Shut it all down. Good done.